What were wine bricks? Short answer? Also known as the brick with a kick, the wine brick was a way vineyards successfully skirted around prohibition laws in the United States during the 1920s. The Volstead Act, which set prohibition in motion, made many winemakers decide to cut their losses, literally, as they tore up their vineyards and replaced them with orchards. But the act still allowed for the production of grape juice and grape concentrate for explicitly non-alcoholic consumption. So some decided to try and stick it out, producing these large bricks of grape concentrate. The idea being that these could be used to make grape-flavored soft drinks. Long answer? Well, surprise, surprise, if you know your history, then you know America was anything but sober during the Prohibition era. With bootleggers and home brewers galore, America, like Dylan Thomas, was not going gentle into that good night. So how exactly were the vineyards involved? Well, they teamed up with the bootleggers, although not directly. While still allowed to produce grape juice and concentrate, if any of it was directly being sold to be used to make wine, the grape growers could find themselves easily in jail. So using these bricks of grape concentrate, they found a loophole that would keep them in the clear. As I said before, they were being marketed and sold as a way to make a grape soft drink and directly on the label they would tell customers how to do so. But just below that, they would also include very specific instructions that warned their patrons the beverage would become alcoholic if left in a cool cupboard for 21 days. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. It's the same as having a chemistry teacher show you in detail how to make crystal meth, just so you don't do it by accident. But due to the popularity of these bricks, the price of grapes skyrocketed during this time period. By 1924, the price for a ton of grapes was a whopping $375, up from just $950 before the Prohibition. And you might think $375 is not a lot for an actual metric ton of grapes, but remember, this was in 1924. In today's money, you'd be dropping over five grand for those babies. And this is because of what I said earlier. A lot of vineyards decided to close down and reopen as orchards, so you had this huge increase in demand with fewer vineyards than ever left to fill it. And the kicker in all of this? Well, apparently the grapes that were best for making this concentrate brick were not the best for making wine, and as a result, it tasted like crap. Nevertheless, it was booze and America was thirsty. It really is an intriguing story of how an entire industry found a way to skirt the rules. So if you'd like to learn more, I'll leave some links down below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you learned something, be sure to drop a like, it really helps me out. And hey, consider subscribing if you want to learn more bits of trivia like this that might help you if you ever wind up on Jeopardy, in which case I'm entitled to 10% of your winnings. Okay, bye, see you next week!